please. All right, guys, this here is a demonstration on uh, breadboard use and, uh, circuit, and logic circuits, all right, and how to set it up on the breadboard, all right? Thank you, thank you. Um, the breadboard itself is, um, is used to basically make all your connections for the circuit, so you don't have to sit there and twist wires together, all right? And uh, with the breadboard itself, um, where this blue line is, all these here are shorted horizontally. So basically, if I make a, put a wire in here and a wire down at this end, they will be connected through the breadboard that way. All right. Um, same with the red, uh, the red line down here. Those are also shorted horizontally. They are not shorted vertically this way. All right. And then the same uh, happens down on the bottom side. Okay. What I've done here is I've put a jumper from the red channel to the red channel down here, so that when I connect power into the red channel along the top, it'll also be in the red channel at the bottom. Right? And I've done the same thing for the ground. Right? Generally, I'm going to use um, red or orange or light color for a power connection, and be a dark color, like um, green usually or black, for a, uh, a ground connection, a negative. Okay? The uh, channels in the center here, there's one large um, channel that goes along the middle here that is open. There's uh, no connections are through that. Okay? These here are all shorted vertically, right? So there's uh, five pins per channel, these here, and they all go vertically. They are not shorted hor um, horizontally this way, okay? And there's a set on the top here and, and another set on the bottom, okay? This here particular breadboard is uh, labeled as A, B, C, D, E for, for one, uh, one set on the top and F to J on the bottom here. Okay, so if you're looking for particular pins, all right? The logic circuit that uh, I'm going to do today is actually the first one in your uh, setup that you're going to do. And what that involves, quite simply, is two, uh, is two types of logic gates that the circuit uh, is, is a part of. Okay? Uh, there's an AND, uh, two AND gates and an OR gate. Okay? The, the two AND gates, if they're both high, you're going to get a high out. And if there's a low, then you're going to get a low out on any of them. So you need uh, one A and one B to be high or 2A and 2B to, uh, to be high in order to get a high out. The OR gate, you need uh, one, in, one of the inputs to be high in order to get a high out. Right? And this here particular one, 1A one is going to be high and there will be a high on the output. Okay? And I'm going to set this here uh, particular circuit up uh, on the breadboard. Right? Now inside the ICs, this here is a computer IC, okay? an integrated circuit. Inside there's Gobs of transistors in there that formulate uh, gates, logic gates, in this particular chip. This here is a 14-pin chip. Um, the chip itself is the housing, all the circuitry is inside. Um, you can have common-looking chips, only differentiated by the part number. This here is the 32 chip, and that would indicate that it's the uh, OR gates. Okay? Inside, the inside the chips themselves, and I've highlighted the two chips that I'm going to use today, there's the AND gate, which is the 08 chip, and in there, there is four logic gates. Okay, there's a whole series of transistors in there that formulate the particular logic gates that we're going to use. Okay? Now, there's uh, pin 1. Uh, the notch on the chip itself indicates where pin 1 is, and for this here particular chip, pins 1 and pins 2 are the inputs to the first logic gate, and pin 3 is the output, indicated as 1Y. The next logic gate would be 2A, 2B, and then 2Y is the output, and so forth. Please take note, uh, when you're going around the chip, pins 1 to 7, then 8 to 14 on the other side. Okay, so it goes in a horseshoe uh, fashion around the chip for the numbering. Okay, the, on the opposite side, or on the top side of this, from where I'm sitting, um, the output is pin 9, sorry, pin 8, and the two inputs are pins 9 and 10. Okay, so they get uh, reversed. Okay, so take note when you're plugging your, uh, um, the, pin, uh, the wires into that particular chip. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to wire up on any IC is your ground. On, this, on these particular chips, they're all pin 7 is ground, and pin 14, which is VCC, are also plus 5 volts. Okay, the high. Okay. So this here particular chip is the 08 chip, right? It has a notch right on the end, which indicates to me where pin 1 is right there, right? I always 
me personally, I like to orient the, the uh, chips with the notch to the left so that I know that my bottom left here is pin 1 to pin 7 and 8 to 14 on the opposite sides. Okay? First thing that, that I ever wire up on any of my ICs, and I'm going to plug in the OR, the, uh, or gate at the same time. Okay? Um, one more thing that I forgot to show you is it's a really cool tool here is the chip straightener. If the pins are all bent inwards or outwards, you can put it in here, give it a squeeze, it'll straighten them all out. It does not straighten them out if they're bent um, this way, back and forth, but it will straighten them out that way. You can use your fingernails to bend them that way. Get them nice and straight so that they fit across that, that middle channel so that all these um, all, the, all the pins that are uh, vertically, all the uh, slots that are there, uh, will be connected to those particular pins. And I can just uh, put a wire into those to connect to that. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to wire up is the ground. I've already got some pre-made um, uh, wires, uh, jumpers made. And you can make this, I make this out of uh, network cabling, which gives me the right gauge wire and it's easy to use. Right, and it's a solid strand. So I'm literally just going to plug anywhere into that column that's connected to the pin 7 and plug that into the blue channel which is the ground. Okay, and I'm going to try to keep it nice and neat and straight as, as I go. Right? And I'm going to do that to both my ICs. I'm going to make my jumper, connect it in, and connect it to my ground. Okay, so right now I've got a ground connected to both ICs. Now I'm going to connect my power. So the power is going to plug into pin 14 and go to the top channel for my red. I could have plugged it in down here, but I didn't want to cross over top of my IC. If I have to remove my IC, then I don't have to pull wires out in, in, order, in order to do so. So that's why I made my connections come across. So I have ground and, and positive available on both sides of the IC. So again, so pin 14 the power. All right. So right now when I apply power to the breadboard, I will have my ICs powered up. So what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to wire up my logic circuit. So the logic itself, as you can see, right, I've got a high going into pin 1 and a high going into pin 2 on my logic gate. If I use the next logic gate down, I will need a high into 2A and a low into 2B. Uh, in order to get my, uh, from inputs from my, on my AND gates. So those will be the ones I'll wire up first. What I'm going to do, I, I try to color code all of my wires that are going in. When you have a huge amount of uh, wiring that you're doing on a particular breadboard, if they're color coded, they're easier to fall fine, easier to trace through. Okay, so it's, it's a good habit to get into, and you'll get good, better marks if you have them color coded. All right. So my first pin here on pin 1, if I look at my logic gates here, pin 1 is 1A. And that there is supposed to be a high, so I'm going to wire that directly into the positive channel, which gives me plus 5 or a high or a 1 uh, into pin 1. And I'm going to give another high into pin 2 of that same logic gate. Now I've used a white with a blue striped wire and I'm going to use that wire for all my inputs in my logic gates. So for logic I'm going to, I'm going to use the blue wires. So I'm going to have the blue and blue white as my inputs and the outputs of my logic gates I'm going to use a dark blue. So uh, for my logic that's going through. Right. I'm going to do the inputs to the, other, to the second logic gate which goes into pin 4 which needs a high I'm going to plug that into the high. Right. And the next output goes into 2B, which is into pin 5, and that is going to be a low. So I'm going to plug that into the ground channel, the blue one on the bottom. So I have all the appropriate logic that was specified in the diagram plugged into my AND gates. Now the outputs of the AND gates back on the circuit here, the outputs of the AND gates go into the inputs of the OR gate. So the, here's where I'm going to have my blue wires going from pin 3, which is 1Y, and pin 6, which is 2Y, going into the inputs 
of 1A and 1B of the OR gate, which is the 32 chip. So pin 3 is going to go into 1, pin 1 there, and pin 6 is going to go into pin 2. So now I have the, in, the outputs of my AND gates, both of them feeding into the inputs of my OR gates. Right. So the output of my OR gate um, is going to be high. That's the final output. In order to see the output, I'm going to use an LED to demonstrate whether it's a high or a low. If it's on, it's a high. If it's off, it's a low. Okay. Now the LED itself, as a light emitting diode, it has there's several ways to figure out which pins are, what are the high and the low. One pin is longer than the other. Right? That indicates that it's, that's the positive lead of the LED, and the shorter lead uh, indicates that that's, that goes into the negative. If they have to be cut off, you can tell inside the um, LED there's a little cup. If you don't need glasses, you might be able to see it. Right? And that would indicate whether that goes into the uh, negative lead. Right? So the cup would, go into the, uh, would be the negative pin. Also, if you look down on the LED, you will see a flat edge. On the, uh, on the plastic housing of the LED, that also indicates where the negative lead is. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug the negative lead directly into the channel and the positive, positive lead into one of the um, channels, one of the vertical channels that I can uh, make a connection to. I'm going to use a 220 ohm resistor. You're going to look, uh, just having 5 volts going directly into the LED uh, will, will burn out the LED if I have uh, a direct connection. You're going, to want to slow, you're, going to, you're going to want to slow the current down, so you're going to want to have somewhere between 100 ohms to maybe about 500 ohms of resistance within, within that LED circuit, um, depending on how bright you want the LED. So right now it's going to be a 220 ohm resistor. I'm going to go from the output of, of the OR gate and put that into the input of the LED. Okay. I have here a 5 volt power supply uh, that's connected. If I, um, anything higher than 5 or 6 volts um, can do damage to the ICs. They will get very hot and they will stop working. Right. Sometimes you can get blue smoke coming out of them. Do not try this. Right. I'm going to connect my positive and my ground lead, in, my positive into the red, and my ground lead on this particular one I can tell by the strand. Uh, um, stranded wire. It's been a negative. All right, so my LED is on right now because that's the final output. It's supposed to be high for this particular circuit. All right, so for the most part, initially it looks like it's working. Um, this still may uh, might be high based on some erroneous uh, circuitry. So in order to check the actual circuit following through, I can trace that circuit through. And this would be the same procedure as if you're doing uh, some fault finding to find out you can trace your circuit through. And for this here, I'm going to use a logic tester. Logic tester, basically, if it's a high, that red light's going to come on. If it's low, the green light's going to come on. Right? For example, if I go into the negative, my green light is, is on. Okay? If I go to the high, my, my red light is on. So I can go along each pin of the IC and tell whether or not it's a high or a low. 